It's the real news. I'm Aaron Matte. Tuesday is primary day in California, and it's a big day because California could well decide who controls Congress in November. But California also has many important races at the local level, where progressive activists and organizers are bringing the same energy that they've brought to national races in California and across the country. Joining me to discuss is Karen Bernal. She is the former chair of the California Democratic Party Progressive Caucus. Welcome, Karen. You've been especially involved uh, in your uh, area in Northern California uh, in the district attorney's race in your area. And there's been a lot of activism around that across the state. Can you explain? Well, yes. I mean, it's no secret that um, there's been a lot of focus um, recently, especially after Trump's, uh, you know, been president about uh, law enforcement interactions, especially with communities of color. Um, I think, think it's no secret, you see it on social media all the time about uh, cop shootings, um, especially with uh, young African American men and women and some Latinos too, but uh, it's, it's uh, hard to deny. So I think things hit a fever pitch when we had the Stephon Clark shooting here in Sacramento. Um, and as, uh, because of that, there was a PAC started, um, Real Justice PAC, um, Sean King, along with Becky Bond and others from uh, Bernie's campaign. And um, what we've uh, done is that we've focused on county prosecutor and law enforcement races around the country uh, Sacramento is definitely front and center in that fight. So yes, um, the, all the progressive energy, as it were, the 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 burners, um, they've all you know come together over this uh, DA's race and the sheriff's race. And the national races, uh, California has some high-profile uh, lawmakers in Congress who are being challenged, especially Senator Dianne Feinstein. Uh, she's facing a uh, very large group of candidates. And because of California's system, anybody, the, the top two candidates in any, from either party are the ones who advance the general, which means that come November, Feinstein could be facing off against a Democrat. Could you talk about that race? Yes. I mean, she could be. Uh, we don't know that that's for sure. I have to say that you mentioned that there were multiple candidates, multiple Democratic candidates at that. And that, um, that reality alone may be enough to kind of put the Republican, unfortunately, I stand fortunately as a progressive, um, you know, up against Feinstein. Uh, we know from the polling that um, pretty much the progressive Democratic field has kind of split the votes up, so to speak. Um, and so Feinstein may be facing a Republican as a result. That, but you know, that's not for certain. And we do have some, um, we do have some uh, candidates on the Democratic side that, you know, certainly between two or three of them could very well end up in the uh, top two, as they call it. Um, if that happens, we'll, it'll definitely be a fight between the establishment and the progressive wing of the party. And the uh, governor's race, uh, you have uh, Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, who is in the lead, but that's a situation where he could uh, be, where his second place finisher could be a Democrat, which has led to concerns that in November, that might uh, split the vote if you have two Democrats running against a Republican. Well, the thing there, though, is we have a system here, again, top two. So in that instance, one of the things that happened recently, which um, caused a lot of consternation, was the fact that uh, Gavin Newsom's campaign, it was found out, was sending mass tweets targeted to Republicans in an effort to drive um, uh, the Republican turnout, the thinking being that Gavin would rather face off against a Republican than another Democrat. The thing about that is um, what caused the outrage is that as you stated at the at the top of the show, is that um, it is a priority for Democrats at the national level to try to flip some of these Republican seats for Congress. Uh, so in those swing districts, 
Um, not to mention, of course, the impact that it would have with down ticket races, um, trying to mobilize uh, Republicans to turn out in the hopes of not having to face another Democrat has a very uh, negative impact on those races that are in swing districts and those down, down ticket rake, races for uh, Democratic candidates. Hmm. You uh, were part of a team of uh, progressive activists who wrote an autopsy of the Democratic Party just a few months ago. An autopsy that, that, that famously the Democratic Party itself refused to write, uh, refusing to uh, do a, some, sort of take stock of its massive loss in 2016. How have you seen the party respond to the many reforms that you proposed? Uh, and how has the, the civil war between progressives and corporate Democrats been playing out in your state, California? Oh, boy. Uh, I have to say, it, it's sad to say, but I do, not see, um, I do not see them taking anything that we enumerated and advised um, the party to take up. I have not seen them take it to heart. Um, as we all know, they came out with a, a, a lawsuit against a WikiLeaks and against Russia um, and Trump. Um, we would have much rather have seen the focus be on perhaps some of those states where the Republicans have engaged in, um, you know, suppressing the vote on a lot of the, the voter ID laws, for instance, that uh, disenfranchised many people in the 2016 election. Um, We've also seen them, uh, the DCCC, seemingly prioritize those Democrats that either had, um, you know, military intelligence um, or military background for these congressional races, in some cases against known progressivists on the ground. Um, and uh, those are the kind of things that do not build enthusiasm in the base. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, what cost us the election in 2016, that same dynamic, which is a lack of enthusiasm, um, the fact that the turnout was bad in a lot of those states, that dynamic um, it, it hasn't gone away. And really, the only enthusiasm that we're seeing are those which uh, are races that are basically self-determined by the base itself, the progressive base. Um, and oh, by the way, too, I am still current uh, chair of the Progressive Caucus. And what I'm seeing in the caucus is that um, the most enthusiasm we see out of our members there are those races that have been self-determined by the base. Hmm. Well, we'll leave it there. Karen Bernal, the current chair, I misspoke in the intro, the current chair of the California Democratic Party Progressive Caucus. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. thank you for joining us on The Real News.